going guys we're going to go over some of the classifications of matter and how they're differentiated in chemistry so first off i'll just draw the chart all matter can be separated into these two categories based on chemistry here we go we have homogeneous and heterogeneous basically having visible differences uh, to the naked eye or looking like it's all one thing. That's how at least my professor described it. Now of homogeneous, we have pure and solution. Now of pure, we can further differentiate that into elements, pure elements, and compounds. Now, the only other thing I'm going to add to this is mixtures. So if it's heterogeneous, it's a mixture. So this is kind of the basic framework. It's good to memorize, and then you can kind of break down things as you go. So the main uh, characteristics uh, that dif differentiate all these, I'll go through each one at one time. So for elements, we got basically it's all one thing. An element is a, a single uh, element. So here we go, we have some aluminum foil, that's an example of a, an element, it's just aluminum and it's made into a really thin malleable form um, paper clip, that's another example, it's just steel, it's just like a steel wire um, and it's an element. Um, no matter how you break it up, it's still an element. Now for compounds, um, oh, another example of an element would be graphite, that is just carbon made out of a condensed form of carbon and that's an element. Now for compounds uh, we have uh, lots of different examples that you kind of see in everyday life um, but one really common one would just be salt. That is just a one it's one single thing uh, that is formed of two different elements. So it is uh, NaCl, that's table salt, um, sodium and chloride. Now another one that's really a common uh, compound is water. Water is made out of H2O, two hydrogens and one oxygen. And that's, uh, you know, a, a, it's a compound because they're, they're bonded together. Uh, and that's just a, a common one to remember. Another one is like a crystal. It's kind of a cool one. Um, it's made out of different minerals that are bonded together and yep compounds are I think I explained that pretty well so now moving on we have he uh, homogeneous solutions so now solutions uh, are a little bit different you for example one of them could be um, like if you put salt mix it with water salt water that's going to separate and eventually it will disperse to a point where the uh, NaCl is evenly distributed within the water, but it still isn't bound to the water. And that's what differentiates it from a compound. If it bonded to the water, that would become a compound. Um, but since it doesn't, um, that's a solution. It's just water mixed with something that it won't bond to. So another example would be like tea um, and coffee as well. Those are really common solutions. And now we can get down to a little bit further into basically how your professor defines it. It's really important because, for instance, my professor defined um, solutions as things that basically is it homogeneous or is it heterogeneous? If it, if it only looks like one thing, like if you look at it and you only see one thing, for example, um, like I look at this piece of tape right here and I only see one thing. I see a yellow piece of tape. So that would then classify as it's homogeneous. So it has to be a solution because I know there's something adhesive in it and I know there's probably some kind of plastic or paper in that. So there's more than one thing and they're probably not chemically bonded together. But on the other hand, it, it's still, I don't see multiple different things on it. I, all I can see with my naked eye is one piece of tape. And there's nothing, no details on it that I can differentiate it with. So that's kind of a tricky one because more likely it's probably a mixture of things. Um, so going down uh, down the chart here, we're going to finally get to the heterogeneous mixtures. Now mixtures are pretty much uh, anything else that you can imagine, like for instance my pen, that is a mixture. 
because you can looking at it you can see multiple different things this looks like some kind of like rubber maybe uh, the plastic obviously the ink is inside there and some kind of you know coloring on this uh, there's a spring in there that's a piece of metal um, all kinds of things going on in there uh, diorama person you can look at that it's probably made out of plastic and then there's multiple different paints on it just looking at it you can see multiple different materials going into the production of it and I think pretty much it's safe to say that a heterogeneous mixture you can lump almost anything else into that category um, really um, you know even a person you could argue is a heterogeneous mixture because while there are elements compounds and solutions built up on it looking at a person you can see different textures you can see the hair you can see the skin the eyes whatever um, and that's kind of how my professor again defined those differences now um, there are definitely some tricky ones that we can get into now that will make you think and these ones might end up boiling down to what you how what you can argue for uh, depending on as long as you understand the definitions well enough so one of them is tap water obviously h2o is going to be a compound it's just two hydrogens and one oxygen bound together that's a compound but tap water might have other things in it so it could have metals uh, hopefully it wouldn't have like lead or something like that but it could have fluoride which would make you think it's probably more of a solution um, but that's something that potentially you could argue because if it's pure if it's distilled it kind of depends on what you're talking about now um, now for coins like theoretically a coin was originally made out of just copper just nickel just steel etc something like that and uh, that would be you know a nice way to think about them like a penny could just be 100% copper but in reality they're made out of alloys now alloys again it can get kind of tricky because there's different ways you can argue like a coin could theoretically be uh, pure like I said if it's just copper depends on what what coin you're talking about could be a pure element or it could be theoretically a compound if the alloys are chemically bonded together but more than likely they aren't chemically bound together which would make it again either a, a solution or a, a mixture depending on how you define it now again my professor defined um, solutions as it didn't have to have water in it it didn't have to even be liquid a solution just meant that it was something that's homogeneous that isn't a mixture um, and it isn't an element or a compound so by those definitions you can almost define coins infinitely as just about anything now going down um, another one is gasoline kind of depends on your knowledge of how I guess how that works and how the world works um, So gasoline, again, could be a lot of things. Probably not an element. You could probably know that. Uh, but other things it could be is a compound. Gasoline itself, or, or whatever is specifically used as fuel, whether that's like ethylene or, or, or um, not ethylene, but you know methane or something like that, whatever is used as fuel is probably a compound of some sort. But you could make the argument that it is a solution because there are different purity levels. And when you go and fill up your uh, your car, there's multiple different settings you can choose from there. So there's probably other things added in for quality and whatnot. Bread is another one that's kind of caught some people in my class off guard because, again, if you're defining it by just what you look at, depending on what kind of bread, maybe you only see one thing. Maybe it's just plain white bread, there's no crust, that's it. So that would make you think it's homogeneous, but you know that it's actually a mix of different ingredients. So... That's a tough one. Um, shampoo, also, this is one I got on a quiz. Um, it really depends on how you spin it because you can't really say all shampoos are one or the other. Um, probably they're all mostly solutions or mixtures, um, but that depends. I mean, if you can see different things in it, if you have some kind of fancy shampoo that has like, you know, little beads in it or glitter in it or different textures in it, different ingredients, uh, you can make more of an argument for a mixture. But um, for me, if it's just like a plain, like one color shampoo, that's going to be a solution. Um, now, another one that's kind of tricky is plastic. Like, for instance, this. Um, really tricky because, first of all, if you don't have much of a background, you, you don't really necessarily know what that is. Um, plastic could be a compound, uh, theoretically, if it's just ethylene. 
that's like a common um, like ingredient to plastic, but a lot of them are mixtures. And, and depending on what they mix it with determines like if it's like pliable or if it's, you know, if it can be bent a little bit um, or if it's just really stiff. Uh, for example, if it's like uh, ethylene and like uh, chlorine, that one is commonly used in a lot of like manufacturing of like plastic cans and bottles and things. Um, and that would be, again, kind of like a mixture, but when you look at it, you'd think it was homogeneous. So I think a lot of it, you have to really be specific with your professor on how they define these things and what you can argue based on your understanding of the pure definitions of all these, which is element is just one element. Uh, compound is multiple elements that are chemically bonded together. Uh, solutions are just things that are mixed together, uh, usually evenly dispersed throughout, and perhaps looks like just one thing, or, or becomes a simple shade, like if you mix two different paints together and it becomes a single color uh, uniformly throughout, that would be a solution. And then mixtures are <clears throat> really everything else. So yeah, that's kind of how I understand these terms and some good examples, uh, things to watch out for. I hope this helps someone.